This is the second part on negative exponents and it is a study of scientific notation. So this little chart here has all different powers of 10 and what we call them, right? We operate in the base 10 system. If you take the Math for Educators courses, you will learn the base 10 system and how to teach it to like second graders. And we pull out base 10 blocks. So there are blocks that are in groups of 10. We have rods, we have mats. And from there, we introduce what it means to take groups of 10, move them over to the next column. So 10 to the zero is one, right? That's your unit. The next group is groups of 10. The next group are groups of hundreds. And so each of those comes from a power of 10. So 10 to the zero are my units. These are my tens. These are my hundreds. These are my thousands. And then it works the other way too, right? If you go past the decimal point in the other direction, you have tenths, you have hundredths, you have thousandths, you have ten thousandths, etc. If you go for much bigger numbers, I right, look at the second column. Here's your thousands. Here's your millions, right? 10 to the sixth is a million. 10 to the ninth is a billion. 10 to the 12th is a trillion. So you start adding a lot of zeros at the end of those terms. If you are dealing with very large numbers or very tiny numbers, scientific notation is a way to write those very large and very small numbers more easily. So it says it can be written in the form of some number times 10 to a power where that number is between 1 and 10 and n is an integer. So how does this work? You're going to move the decimal point until it becomes a number between 1 and 10. So for example, if you were trying to write you know, 748 as a power of 10, you would write it as 7.48 times 10 to the second. Okay, so you would move that decimal point until the number before the time sign is between 1 and 10. You wouldn't write it as 74.8, you would write it as 7.48. Right? That positive integer n is a number of decimal points, and then you have to decide whether to move it right or left. This is something I, I took from the book. I thought maybe you would want to see how to write it out. Sometimes something like this is easier to do intuitively. So let's take a look. So the rule is keep a single digit to the left of the decimal point. So here's a number. It's 12 million. Write it using scientific notation. What do we want? We want one number before the decimal point. So 1.2 times 10 to what power? Well, I'm going to take the decimal point that was between the 1.2 and I'm going to move it to the right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. That's my exponent. So if I'm going to the right, it's going to be a positive exponent. All right, so then let's take a look at 465,000. What do I do for my first term here? I want one number before the decimal place. So I want just that four, 4.65. So I put my decimal place and then anything else that goes after it goes after the decimal place, and then times 10 to what? Well, 4.65 is here. Move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to the right. There it is with scientific notation. Now look at the last one. The last one down here looks a little different. It's a decimal. It's a very small number. So again, I've got a 1 and 5, so I'm going to write it as 1.5 times 10 to some power. Now, Here's where that decimal goes in my 1.5. This time I'm moving it to the left, to the left, to the left. How far? One, two, three spots to the left. So when I move it three spots to the left, it's 10 to the negative third. All right, so I started with that decimal between the 1 and the 5, and I moved it one, two, three spots to the left until it hit that decimal point. So if you're moving it to the left, you're going to end up with a negative exponent. So a very small number will have a 10 to the negative power. A very large number will have a 10 to a positive power. All right, so we can go back and forth between them. It says right using decimal notation, so 2.3 times 10 to the 7th. I move that decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places to the right. There we go, 23 million. All right, 3.4 times 10 to the negative 3rd. I've got my 3 and my 4. The decimal point was between the 3 and the 4, so I move it over to the left now. 1, 2, 3, anything that has a gap gets a 0. So 0 0.0034. The ones down the bottom say multiply. So I'm going to multiply the constants and then the powers of 10. So 2.5 times 3 is 7.5. 
three tens, four more tens, seven tens. And I'm done. 7.5 times 10 to the seventh. Huh, I wonder if this next one will be a little bit different. It will be a little bit different. What's different about it? Well, two things. First of all, I'm going to grab a calculator and multiply 4.5 times 7.2. 4.5 times 7.2 is 32.4. Now look at those powers of 10. I got a positive 8 and a negative 5. 8 minus 5 is 3. Now this is not really scientific notation because look at that 32.4. We said we only wanted one number to the left of that decimal point. So really what we want is a 3.24. Well, if we move that decimal, it's going to change the exponent. Right? 3.24 is a smaller number than 32.4 is. So if I'm going to make the first number smaller, i got to make the second number bigger. So the correct way to write this is 3.24 times 10 to the fourth. A right, little application problem might be a good way to wrap this video up. told you it was going to be a short one. For people who are doing econ, you're studying economics of countries, the gross domestic product, in fact, that's been in the news quite a bit recently with whether it's increasing or decreasing, gross domestic product is a total national output of goods and services valued at market prices within the United States. Other countries have GDPs as well. But I'm just looking at the U.S. gross domestic product. So 2020 was the last year I think that they calculated complete numbers. So the GDP in that year was 20940000000000. Just to give an idea what that is, right? This last group are the units. These are your thousands. Then these are your millions, billions, trillions. So all the goods and services that were output in the United States in 2020 was more than $20 trillion. Write this number in scientific notation. So remember when we write things in scientific notation, we have one number to the left of that decimal, and then we include anything that's after that. So 0, 9, 4. Right, so if I take my decimal point and I put it between the 2 and the 0, and here's my decimal point between the 2 and the 0, I have to move it pretty far to the right to get to the end, don't I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And it looks like 6 more. 10, 11, 12, 13. So 2.094 times 10 to the 13th power. Now in that same year, it says the U.S. population was 3.295 times 10 to the 8th. All right, so a little over 329 million people lived in the United States. It says, on average, how many dollars of goods and services were produced by in each individual? And, of course, that's an average. What does it mean? Well, remember that it's not really for each individual person because 329 million people includes, you know, three- and four-year-olds who probably were not doing a lot of work. It also includes a lot of 80-year-olds who are probably not getting up and going to work every day. So goods and services produced... It's just a number that gives you the total GDP divided by the population. So let's try that. Let's take the total GDP, which was 2.094 times 10 to the 13th, and divide it by the population of the United States, which is 3.295 times 10 to the 8th. So the advantage is it makes the numbers smaller, so we don't have to deal with as big numbers. So let's take those two numbers in the front and divide them. 2.094 divided by 3.295. 295. We get a number that's less than 1. We get 0 0.63, I'm going to call it 6355. I'm just going to keep the same number of significant digits as I started with. Now, times 10 to the what? Well, there's 13 on the top, 8 on the bottom, 13 minus 8 is 5. Right? There's 5 more 10s on the top than there are on the bottom. This is not really scientific notation. i got to move that decimal point over. So if I move that decimal point over and make it 6.355, now I've made that number larger. So if I make that number larger, I've got to make this number smaller. So it drops from 10 to the 5th to 10 to the 4th. What does that look like? 1, 2, 3, 4. So on average, 
each person in the United States in 2020 produced $63,550 worth of goods and services. So depends what you do, right? I'm a teacher. I don't produce goods in terms of like actual blocks of wood or something like that. But on average, my services were worth that much for the year 2020. Interesting. On average, of course. But that's another way to use scientific notation. We take very big numbers or very small numbers and make them more manageable.